Happening now, Jamestown school districts hope to assist in COVID-19 vaccination. We look at the process next. Plus, a former Southwestern Trojan makes good in the National Football League. Well, just like clockwork, the lake effect snow is back and it's going to be with us through at least the first half of the weekend. We'll time it out next. The news at noon starts right now. Live and on demand, this is WNY News Now. And thanks for joining us for WNY News Now on this Friday. I'm Justin Gould. One of the area's largest schools is looking at the possibility of hosting COVID-19 vaccination sites within their buildings. WNY News Now's Claire Golt spoke with school officials today about the feasibility of hosting the sites. This is the, really the first phase in getting back to normal. Jamestown Public School Superintendent Dr. Kevin Whitaker says he hopes to offer the vaccine to staff and eventually the community at large. At a school board meeting this week, Whitaker and other officials discussed getting directly involved in the vaccination process by working with a provider like the Chautauqua County Health Department. What we'd like to do is we would love to be able to get a vaccine allocation, work with a provider, um, whether it's the health department or another provider, uh, depending on the vaccine allocation, of course, and have vaccination stations essentially in our buildings. Whitaker says he doesn't want his staff and the people of Jamestown to have to travel long distances just to get vaccinated. We're a community resource and our community pays for our building or has paid for our buildings and our grounds. Um, so we have to give back. He says the current plan is to have medical professionals from the health department or another qualified provider to administer the vaccines. The district is not mandating the vaccine. However, Whitaker says people are desperate to get it and many already have. Any time a clinic opens, there may be, I don't know, anywhere between 300 and say 1,000 uh, doses that are available. And if you watch the counter that says how many are available, they vanish in 10, 15 minutes. They're just gone. In Jamestown, Claire Gall, WNY News Now. Claire, thank you. At the school board meeting, the superintendent also discussed the district's financials, saying the proposed $15 billion federal aid package to New York is needed to secure the school's fiscal stability. A new death linked to COVID-19 and 64 additional cases of the virus were reported in Chautauqua County yesterday. The county health department's COVID-19 dashboard indicated the death involved a 90-year-old, the 52nd death in the county since the pandemic began. Of the 64 new cases reported, 16 are in Jamestown. There are now 520 cases active countywide. Officials report 43 people are hospitalized, that up from the day before. The county's seven-day average percent positivity rate continued to trend downward to 9.3%. To date, there have been 5,900 cases reported with 5,300 people recovering. Well, the new administration pledged to waste no time tackling the global pandemic that is crippling the United States hospital system and still causing thousands of deaths each day. Karen Kaifa has the latest on President Joe Biden's national aim at fighting COVID-19. To a nation waiting for action, let me be the clearest on this point. Help is on the way. One year and more than 400,000 American deaths later, President Joe Biden has inherited a crisis like no other. And on his first full day in office, his team is wasting no time. This crisis is dire uh, and it requires uh, immediate action. And we hope and expect uh, members of both parties to work together to do that. The Biden administration has a national strategy for getting the pandemic under control. And the president signed at least 10 executive actions focused on COVID-19. Our national plan launches a full scale wartime effort to address the supply shortages by ramping up production and protective equipment, syringes, needles, you name it. Dr. Anthony Fauci, now Biden's chief medical advisor, believes the United States can reach the president's goal of 100 million COVID-19 vaccines administered in 100 days and may be able to surpass it. The concern I have and something we're working on is getting people who have vaccine hesitancy who don't want to get vaccinated because many people are skeptical about that. So we really need to do a lot of good outreach for that. And House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says she's eager to get Biden's COVID relief bill 
passed. What the country needs to crush the virus, put money in the pockets of the American people. Karen Kafa reporting. Karen, thank you. Today, President Biden is turning his focus to the economy. A Southwestern Central School alumni, Nick Sirianni, has been named the new head coach for the Philadelphia Eagles, that according to reports with ESPN. Sirianni has climbed through the NFL ranks, having served as the Indianapolis Colts offensive coordinator and has coached with the Chargers and Chiefs. Chautauqua County Executive P.J. Wendell is among those passing along their congratulations. Congratulations, Nick. Awesome accomplishment. Great things uh, for you and your family in the future. I guess now we have to root for another team outside of our Bowen Buffalo Bills. Congratulations, Nick, and to your entire family for a great accomplishment and a great achievement. Sirianni replaces coach Doug Peterson, who was fired this offseason after the Eagles failed to make the playoffs. Well, we thank you for joining us for WNY News. Now, TGIF to you and yours as we get a check of uh, local news that matters to you. Great to see Barbara, Sue, Cheryl, Kay, and Greg. Let us know what you're thinking about today in the comments down below. Good to see uh, Cindy, Kimberly, Mary, and uh, Linda as well. Hopefully, you all are having a great Friday out there. Well, now let's switch gears and get a check of our first defense weather forecast. That's where we find Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter. Happy Friday, Mr. Hunter. Happy Friday, Justin. We made it through the end of another work week here, and uh, we've got some snow falling, as we told you about. Uh, this is the camera from Salamanca, and you can see the lake snow flurries that are flying there. 30 degrees right now, but it is windy with that west wind of 11 miles per hour, and that's still going to be a factor through the day today. The radar shows you these weak bands of lake effect snow that are coming into the southern tier, and this is going to continue through the afternoon and especially into tonight, and more accumulation is on the way. This is something we've been hinting over the past couple of days that lake effect snow was going to be coming back. Four inches of snow on the ground at the airport. We're at nine and a half inches for the month. Look at where we should be 22.9. Seasonal total 30 and a half down over two feet of snowfall for the season. 35 was the high yesterday. 30 was the official low early, uh, basically early last night. Temperatures have been sliding downward uh, since then, and uh, the, the uh, high for today actually was 31 uh, degrees, but we've actually slipped down from that. So, scattered lake effects, no showers through the afternoon today. Daily accumulation around 1 to 3 inches. Breezy. Temperatures are falling through the day. 27 to 38. Early afternoon highs will slide to 20 to 26 by the afternoon, and the wind still a problem with wind gusts near 30 miles an hour. A very cold day coming up tomorrow, and the cold air sticks around into the next week. We'll tell you about it in detail in a few. Justin? All right, Dakota, we'll be looking forward to that full forecast coming up. Thank you. A Jamestown man convicted on weapons charges will now spend three years behind bars. The U.S. attorney announced 57-year-old Irving Buchanan was handed down the sentence yesterday. In June 2016, prosecutors say the man, who was on the New York State parole at the time following a manslaughter conviction, was busted with two firearms and a box of ammunition connected to a Pennsylvania investigation. While speaking with his parole officer at the time, prosecutors say the man admitted to helping facilitate the sale of dozens of stolen firearms from that state. Following court proceedings, the man was convicted of being a felon in possession of a firearm. The Chautauqua County Sheriff is taking the lead in helping foster police reform, as Sheriff Jim Quatrone is meeting with local departments. Quatrone has already met with the Town of Carroll and Town of Ellicott Police. He'll meet with more agencies this week. Town of Ellicott Police Chief William O'Meese says, while not everyone likes the answers they get with dealing with officers, he cannot solve policing issues if he is not aware of them. I think we've got a great community overall. We have problem areas just like anybody else. Not everybody gets or hears the answer they want to get when we're out there. We certainly try to do the best for all. Um, we certainly, again, strive to make our victims whole, make them feel safe uh, in a safe community. Um, I've always said if there's a problem with our officers, I need to hear it. I can't correct it if I don't hear it. Um, I welcome that. 
The chief went on to say he encourages public input and that his officers are told to make their presence aware within the community. Quatron explains that among the issues being looked at in reforming police are better ways for officers to connect with their communities, technology use, and de-escalation along with use of force. Omi stressed that if police are not striving to improve, then they are falling behind. Next, here an update on a deadly helicopter crash in western New York. But first, the Jamestown BPU warning you about a costly scam. The details of that and more next as WNY News Now continues on this Friday. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. EagleZip.com is your local one-stop shop for all of your home and business computer needs. Located on Fluvanna Avenue Extension, just outside of Jamestown, EagleZip.com sells and services all brands of desktops and laptops, as well as servers and network equipment for your business. All new computer sales include transferring your data from your old computer, plus a two-year warranty. Call EagleZip.com today. Stop by EagleZip.com today and let us make computers easy for you. Sorry about that. No, no, I've been staying at my dad's place because of everything. Where are we going? He's good. Yeah, I know, we keep missing each other. Uh, I've been working out of my dad's house, doing some reading. I should be working out more. I just feel like I'm drowning. Navigating these times can be tough, but while you care for your loved one, you also need to care for yourself. Go to aarp.org caregiving for free mental health and self-help tips. Remember when you were a kid, huddled around the television, waiting for your school to close? Well, we don't get snow days. When winter weather hits, count on the First Defense Weather Team for a look into the future where the snow is headed next. Live radar showing you the scope of the storm. And real-time reports from the field. So when it matters most, stay with First Defense Weather. Catch your First Defense forecast daily on WNY News Now with coverage that matters. This is WNY News Now. And welcome back to WNY News Now. The Jamestown Board of Public Utilities is warning its customers about a recent scam here in the city. Communications coordinator Becky Robbins tells us that they're cautioning residents that someone is going door to door impersonating a BPU employee. The scammer tells the residents that their power will be disconnected if they do not pay them immediately. She says the BPU never sends employees to a resident's home to seek payment and that all BPU employees who do work in the field will wear BPU issued uniforms and carry picture identification. The U.S. Army is now leading the investigation into a helicopter crash that killed three National Guard members on a training exercise this week. The UH-60 Black Hawk medical helicopter crashed in a farmer's field in rural Menden, south of Rochester, on Wednesday night. Witnesses, who first called 911, reported hearing the sounds of an engine sputtering and said that the helicopter was flying very low. Photos from the scene showed the wreckage and flames on a snow-covered field. Now, yesterday, first responders and residents lined the roadways as the victims were driven from the crash site to the Monroe County Medical Examiner's Office in Brighton, escorted by police and fire vehicles. The soldiers' names were not released, and there was no survivors. Well, what parents have to say about food, dieting, and weight can have a lasting impact on their child's health. And as we head into the new year, Mandy Gaither is looking at the importance of being a positive role model for your kids in today's Health Minute. Our children are always watching us. They're listening to what we say. That's why parents play a big part in shaping a child's healthy and not so healthy habits. So start by being a good role model, says dietitian Katherine Sherry of Children's Healthcare of Atlanta's Strong for Life program. If we want our kids to eat vegetables and fruits, 
we need to eat vegetables and fruits. If we want our kids to be drinking more water and less of the juice and the soda, as adults, we need to show them that we're drinking water. Sherry says to avoid weighing yourself in front of your children and don't speak negatively about your own body. In fact, talk positively about your body. It might feel awkward, it might feel out of place, but that's not what your child is gonna pick up on. Being healthy is something that you can do together. Say something like, I'm gonna have a salad today and invite the child to come into the kitchen and help prep it with you. Finally, whether your child is two or a teen, it's never too late to learn. Habits can change, and even though a child is an adolescent, that doesn't mean all is lost, and they can still learn and grow into a healthy adult. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. Mandy, thank you. The dietitian says being a healthy role model for children can also benefit the health of the parents. Well, talk about a sweet job. The Candy Fun House, located in Ontario, is now looking for candyologists. Yeah, that's right. It's a fancy title for someone who's willing to get paid for eating thousands of pounds of confectionery products. The position pays $30 per hour and is available for full-timers or on a permanent contract basis. Those interested in applying can do so until February 15th. These candyologists will help the company pick the products that will be part of the inaugural Candy Funhouse branded line. Hmm, interesting. Who would have thought in today's world you can get paid to eat the good stuff? Thanks for joining us for WNY News. Now let us know what you think about these stories and more in the comments down below. Happy Friday to Kurt. Good to see Marty, Tammy, Sarah, and Terry as well. Let us know uh, what you guys are doing here on this Friday or uh, what you think about these stories and more. We always love interacting with you. Well, let's get to Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter, who's in the First Defense Weather Center. And uh, Dakota, I don't know about you, but that actually looks like a, a pretty good job. However, I feel like over time, it probably it's gonna catch up with you. would, yeah, in health ways, if, mm -hmm. you, if you just eat a lot of candy. But maybe they just taste yeah. the candy, they don't actually eat it, you know what I mean? Right, they just taste it and then... Spit it out, Yeah, possibly. Or, you know, Sophia and the Golden Girls, taste it, blah, put it back in the container, nobody will know. Right, yeah. <laughs> and then just sell it out to people. Exactly. <laughs> Never been tasted before, never been eaten. Uh. Brand new, folks, just vacuum seal it back up. Don't but yeah, but yeah, I don't uh, need any more candy, as you can... Uh, plainly see here. All right, uh, let's get right to the graphics here and we'll talk about the snowfall over the past 24 hours. Franklinville in Cattaraugus County, almost five inches there. Cattaraugus, the town itself, two inches. Ishway in Cattaraugus County, two inches. They're also two inches in Little Valley. Gary, eight hundredths of an inch. Kennedy, half an inch. And Faulkner, three hundredths of an inch of new snowfall. This is over the past 24 hours and Oh yeah, we're gonna have some more snow on the way, but hey, the good news is the snow is great for the ski resorts, peak and peak, now up to 12 to 40 inch bases with a packed powder surface, cockade, eight to 16 inches, machine groom packed powder, Holiday Valley, 16 to 50, uh, machine groom surfaces, Hollymont, 28 inches uh, with a machine groom packed powder surface, also machine groom packed powder, uh, uh, pack, packed powder at Pleasant, that's a tongue twister, with eight to 30 inches bases there. So all the ski resorts doing well with the snowfall. And this is something we've been talking about pretty much all week long. The coldest air yet this winter is going to be coming over the weekend. And Randy from the Christmas story has got the great idea. This is what you need to be doing this weekend. Just bundle up, have your mask on, have it all multiple layers here. Shots of Arctic air is gonna be coming in over the weekend from the north and northwest. And this also is gonna generate bands of lake effect snow so again, where you see the lake effect band, some of it could be moderate to heavy in intensity. We'll show you the projected snowfall totals here in just a minute. 26 as of noon hour at the Jamestown Airport, down from our high for today, which was 31. Northwest wind at 10, but the wind gust is at 22, so it's feeling more like the mid-teens out there. This is what you need to dress for. Temperatures in the teens, even though temperatures maybe mid to upper 20s. It's not going to feel like it when you take the wind into effect. The radar shows you where the lake effect snow is now. Just these few little bursts of lake effect snow. Nothing too organized at this point, but the lake effect snow is going to organize, especially later this afternoon into tonight. You can see all the lakes hooked up in tandem, just bands of lake effect coming off uh, the upper Great Lakes here. And that's what's going to be coming our way, especially tonight and through tomorrow. So the impact level here, we brought it up to about a medium impact level here. So the lake effect snow is going to continue all the way through Saturday 
especially midday Saturday. Um, uh, as we go through the later part of the afternoon on Saturday, the lake snow should taper off. Moderate to heavy bursts at times and the hills will once again take the brunt of the lake effect event as often is the case. This is the uh, in-house computer model. Uh, the uh, snowfall totals here. It came down uh, from where it was yesterday. We threw out on uh, social media last night of the last run of the night and uh, it's actually gone down with the snowfall totals, but we're still expecting about an average three to five inches localized six or seven inches up on the hill. So be wary of that that goes all the way until noon Saturday. So some of you could see some more snow to freshen up those snow packs. So inland areas today, this is where we're ending the day. High temperatures have already occurred today. Temperatures honk honk. You're going the wrong way, man. How about the next seven days of your life? Uh, brought to you by 42 degrees and sunny 20 tomorrow. That is pushing it. Some areas will likely just stay in the upper teens all day. 24 Sunday, the sun will peak out at times, but that's not gonna help but make it feel much warmer. Scattered snow Monday, and we're still cold into mid next week with temperatures only in the mid to lower 20s. We'll take a break, be right back. First Defense Weather is sponsored by 42 Degrees and Sunny. Smoking deals on smoking accessories. Learn more at 42DegreesAndSunny.com. That's 42DegreesAndSunny.com. You're watching WNY News Now, your source for breaking news. There's an old saying, there's no news in the newsroom. Well, it's true. The time I spend at the anchor desk is just part of my day. Most of our time is spent gathering stories in the community. Stories that matter to you. We can't do it alone, and we need your help. When you see breaking news or have a news tip we should know about, drop us a line on Facebook today. Email our news desk or call our newsroom at 488-7226 so we can bring those stories straight back to you. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. I'm a survivor. Testicular cancer is the leading form of cancer in men aged 15 to 35. One in 250 men will be diagnosed with testicular cancer. But 98% will survive if detected early. As a survivor, I believe early detection is the key. Learn how to do a testicular self-exam and other important facts about testicular cancer at oneball4tc.com. Whether it's advice on managing your anxiety or tools to help you stay grounded, Coping 19 provides a range of resources and self-care tips to help you cope with this pandemic. We can help. Find the resources that work best for you at coping-19.org. You're watching WNY News Now, where coverage comes first. And welcome back to WNY News Now. In an effort to help animals find their forever home, we're partnered with the Chautauqua County Humane Society in my favorite segment, the Pet of the Week. Joining us live is Brian Papalaya to talk more about this week's featured furry friend. Happy Friday, Brian. Happy Friday, Justin. How you doing? We have Scooby here. Scooby's five years old. And uh, one of the things that people always ask about, do you have any parts that are good with cats in the in the positive sense? And Scooby, he lived with cats. He is good to be around cats. Um, he's got a lot of energy. He's really well. Um, wow, certainly he sounds like a really uh, a great dog. And, and he, he seems really playful, but gentle in a sense almost too yeah he's um he got a you know when we uh wait to come on air with you um he got a you know we've been in a room so he gets a little rambunctious now but he's great um yesterday we actually took him out for a little ride to our second chance to first store he was awesome in the car um the one thing he's not crazy about he'll notice he's a little thin um so scooby's gonna definitely need some scooby snacks to build that weight up but uh, it's not anything to be concerned about, just, you know, a situation where he will want some extra food here and there to get some bulk. He's not a fan of snow because of um, because of needing the extra weight. So and it's not that he won't go outside. He just isn't crazy about being out there, which I'm sure a lot of people can identify with. 
Right. Oh yeah. Gosh, it's it's that that one thing in Western New York that if we could get rid of, it'd be the white <laughs> and fluffy. <laughs> so you mentioned he was good with uh, cats a little bit. Have you have you been able to see how he fares with other dogs if they were looking at uh, having multiple dogs in a household? That I, I cannot speak to, but um, that's something through the adoption process. If that is a possibility, we always make sure that meets happen and all of that happens safely. So, um, you know, if dogs do get along, that's awesome. If not, it's done in a safe environment. Yeah, certainly. And that's probably one big thing that you always want to try to check um, through that meeting process. If you do have other dogs, um, you know, the Humane Society, you, you'll work with people to see um, if they're a good match. Uh, so if, if folks are interested in uh, learning more about our friend Scooby here, um, what can they do? Uh, they can head over to chqhumane.org and uh, they can find more information about him on the page there under adoptable pets. You'll find adoptable dogs. Um, and then uh, they can fill out the app. They can come meet him. Also, if he's still around, hopefully he'll go home before then. If he's still around, we have our next mall event at the adoption event coming up Saturday January 30th from 12 to 4 and if he doesn't go home by that time he'll be out there to meet people at that as well. Yeah certainly so those are always great events to uh, get involved with and and uh, see the animals in person but as you mentioned Brian chqhumane.org is a, a great place to go to, to take a look and learn a little bit more about him uh, and at the same time if they're interested they could just get that application process started and it makes things uh, really easy to possibly meet up. Uh, coming up, do you have any other uh, initiatives where people in the community who maybe are uh, feeling generous and helping out um, our furry friends down there in uh, yeah. at the society? Yeah, we have our Hot Dogs, Cool Cats, Pet Photo Contest, which wraps up a week from Sunday. So that'll wrap up on the 31st, and that's where people can submit photos of their favorite furry friends or scaly friends or feathery friends. It doesn't have to be dogs or cats. And what happens there is uh, you get friends and family and everybody you know to vote to get your pet to be the CCHS Pet of the Year. There's some great prizes for the folks that finish in the top three or the folks' pets. Um, it's just a fun, you know, light way to start the year off and support the pets here at CCHS. So we'd invite anybody to get involved. Just go to the chqhumane.org and you can find the link to get going and get set up. Yeah, absolutely. I love seeing the gallery of all of the submitted photos, so it'll be exciting to, to check out, uh, especially as everybody tries to stay warm over this weekend. Uh, Ryan Papalea and our friend Scooby today, thank you both so much for joining us. And again, we remind you, if you want to learn more about Scooby or any of the other residents at the shelter, you can contact the Chautauqua County Humane Society via phone at 716-665-2209, or even better, visit chqhumane.org. Well, that's going to do it for WNY News Now today. Before we go, we want to check back in with Chief Forecaster Dakota Hunter, who is uh, standing by with a final look at our weather. And Dakota, as you mentioned, it's going to be getting uh, a little chilly as we head throughout the next uh, couple of days here. Yes, it will be. The the first real punch of Arctic air is going to be coming in over the weekend. Let's take a look at the projected snowfall totals through noon on Sunday. So again, we're still expecting the lake effect snow to, to accumulate possibly about an average two to five inches, some localized spots up to six inches, especially in the hillier terrain of the southern tier. So enough to freshen up the snowpack, Justin. Yeah, certainly. A lot of good uh, for the skiers out there, Dakota. Thank you. Or we'll remind you when you're on the go, stay in the know. Download the WNY News Now mobile app on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store. Dakota and I are back here on Monday. We hope you can join us. In the meantime, though, news does conti continue 24-7 on that mobile app and our website, WNYNewsNow.com. We'll leave you with a live look over downtown Jamestown. Have a great Friday. Stay warm this weekend. We'll see you back here Monday.